get ready for Mikey Sun TV. Four, three, two, one, zero. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's everyone doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Well, looks like we have another movie review discussion to go over. And it is number two in our trilogy of the librarian made for TV movies. Uh, this one is called The Librarian Return to King Solomon's Mines. It came out in 2006. Now, if you watch my reviews, my discussions and that on movies and TV shows and stuff like that, uh, you know that I normally have a handy-dandy trusty notebook. Well, I don't have that. I have my handy-dandy trusty notes, though, wrote down right here. I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be. Uh, it doesn't take a professional to talk about movies and TV shows and stuff like that. Things that you enjoy. Uh, so that's why I do it. Because we don't have to be professionals. To do it, right? We can all enjoy these things. So, let's get on to this great made for TV movie. Bear with me on some of the names. I tend to butcher things when it comes to names. So, here we go. It stars Noah Weil as Flynn Carson, Bob Newhart as Judson. Jane Curtin as Charlene, Gabrielle Anwar as Emily Davenport, Eric Avari as General Samir. Samir? Yes, we do have our reoccurring main cast back in this second movie, and I'm glad. I'm glad that everybody came back. Alright guys, on to the story. Just a short outline of the story. Here we go. Flynn receives a map in the mail with the secret location of King Solomon's mines. When the scroll is stolen, Judson explains the power of the key of Solomon's book and assigns Flynn to retrieve the map. Along his way, Flynn soon meets up with Emily and together they team up to go find King Solomon's mines and trying to find King Solomon's book, all while beating General Samir and his goons. That is the basic story, guys. Simple premises, premise, premise, prepare. Simple stuff, right, guys? Yep. Good stuff. All right. Let's talk about one quick thing that I like, and... It also reminds me a lot of uh, Indiana Jones, uh, especially uh, The Last Crusade. Now, we all know that the story, uh, that the movie's going to have its basic story that I just read, but right as the movie starts, we're in the process of a mid-adventure with Flynn, hot on the trail of the Crystal Skull which he soon finds and takes from another treasure seeker. This is a great opener and it sets us up for an even greater adventure with the search for King Solomon's Mines and King Solomon's book. Uh, I thought that was interesting uh, starting it out uh, on an adventure and there was no build up to it. It was just getting us in there and getting it going and uh, right as we meet up with Flynn and his sidekick that's with him at the time. Sorry, don't know his name. Uh, some Indian, Native American looking dude. Starts out with them right on their, right on the trail of these guys. And they're right in there like within two minutes. It's already going on. So I thought that was a pretty nice way to open. Without having to go into too much of a detail. And on a trip and all this kind of different stuff. So anyway, I... I wanted to make sure I got that out there and thought it was a, a nice way to start. Okay, now let's go on to the things that I don't like as much maybe as I would like to or I found kind of funny and odd. 
not a whole lot. I mean, I got a few things wrote down, but you know, you gotta you gotta kind of pick these things apart if you're gonna talk about them. Because if you're sitting there watching it with your friends or family, whoever, you know, you're gonna talk about things, and these are just some of the things that might come up. So, in that first adventure I was talking about, where they're going after the uh, crystal skull, of course the the goons are uh, you know see them taking it eventually because Flynn screws up and makes some noise and uh so there's a, a whole chase scene on horses and the, and and the bad guys are on like motor vehicles and dirt bikes and you know stuff kind of like that and so Flynn and his sidekick dude are running off on horses and uh they come to this cliff they stop they turn around they go back they get some distance and they run and they jump the horses off the cliff and uh well, number one that's kind of odd to do because it's not just a small cliff it's like it looks like it's 200 feet up so number one that would probably break the horse in half and it'd probably break them in half and it's just kind of the way that it did it the the cgi the you know the it, it kind of looked not great it wasn't horrible better than what i could do by far so uh, I, I try not to judge movies and TV shows and stuff like that super harsh like a lot of people because I look at, well, what could I do? What am I able to do? Well, I know what I'm able to do because I made an Indiana Jones fan film and I, watching back, you know, I can see plot holes and different things that I left in the, in the script and, you know, you can't be perfect. Not everything's going to be great. So... That was just one thing that looked a little eh, and it was kind of an, you know, eh, kind of a situation. Uh, Charlene is still mean and kind of stoned-faced and just kind of, you know, not super friendly to Flynn. After the first movie, uh, I felt like she should have been a little bit more friendly with all, you know, the adventure that he went through and and uh, and uh, he's been with the library now. Uh, in this movie here, he's been with the library uh, just over a year. So, you know, I know it's her character, and uh, and I get it. And it, it's just something that just kind of hit me. Like, one day it might hit me as, eh, and one day it might hit me as, ah, you know, there she is. She's back, you know, she's back. But, eh, you know, it depends on how you, how you take it. And then there's another uh, part early on where Mom uh, sets up, is trying to set up Flynn with another girl like she did in the first movie uh, except this time it's his it's his third cousin <laughs> now am I opposed to that well I live in the south so I don't know you can judge it how you want but third cousin I don't know I know eventually there you know there's a fine line there I just thought it was kind of funny so eh. And the overused cliche of teaming up with beautiful women. All these movies, these adventure movies, action movies, every kind of movie is somehow or another uh, a man and a woman, two, you know, attractive, you know, good looking at least, decent looking people end up together, you know, somehow, some way in the film and going and, and having their, you know, time through the, through the film. It's just kind of overdone. Uh, and this isn't really uh, something I don't like, but I just kind of, you know, it, it's the nature of these movies, and if, I don't know why I even wrote it down. I should have probably put in things that I liked, but they made Flynn look even more the part of Indiana Jones. I mean, literally with like, eventually he has a leather jacket on. Of course, he has his satchel and, and all that. And uh, of course, the movies are very adventure, you know, uh, oriented and it definitely you know these movies were inspired by the Indiana Jones franchise uh, uh, sometimes you could notice the stunt people and to be honest I really only paid attention to that in the very beginning in that first Crystal Skull scene that I've talked about uh, there was a scene that, I mean I wasn't even looking and it was just like popped out at me like the stunt guy for Flynn like look like me might as well have been or should have been a, a black dude or you know whatever it was like that was not Flynn that was not even him <laughs> that was just kind of that was just kind of one of those moments that kind of popped out there 
And again, more biblical artifacts, scripture, references seem to be uh, the most case in these movies. And it seems to be the guideline in most of these adventure kind of movies like this. Uh, I'm not really why, you know, I'm not really sure why that is. I mean, I know the Bible has all kinds of crazy stories and crazy things that you can take and make movies from, and and uh, yeah, yeah, I realize that. But there's also uh, 3,000 other religions out there with probably 3,000 other books and 3,000 other artifacts and all kinds of other things that you can follow and maybe try to do. And I realize that. Especially here in the United States, most people are Christian. Uh, follow the, you know, the Bible, the Christian Bible, and all that. I'm not. I'm atheist slash agnostic, depending on the day. But uh, I have spent time earlier in my life, you know, believing and and that kind of stuff. And I get it. I understand. But there's just so much more out there, possibly, that there is to maybe throw in these kind of movies that might really be different and and not only that maybe even attract other countries and other people out there you know to watch because hey it's a movie about this hey it's something that i believe in so you know it's just it's one of those little things that i kind of look at like all right another biblical reference here here we go so anyway always bad guys in these movies that are one step behind only to get one final jump and chance to win but as usual they seem to get beaten every time you know it's over cliche kind of thing with these kind of movies really any movies with stuff like this and stuff like action movies you know that you know most likely the good guys are gonna do some good stuff here and then about maybe midway in the bad guys are gonna come back and and you know get the jump on everyone and then towards the end, the good guys are going to come back, yeah, you know, and take over and win. So you kind of know that's going to happen. You, ne you never fear for any people, usually, in, you know, in these movies or really any movie. You don't really fear for, like, the good people, you know, really dying or anything. So, you know, just kind of a cliche thing. And there's another character in, the, in this movie called Jomo or whatever, J-O-M-O. Uh, that they run into in Africa and uh, they actually Flynn and uh, Emily actually run up on him in the desert he's actually buried up to his neck I guess he was being uh, punished or you know put to death or something he's buried up to his neck in sand and they free him and then he says I owe you you know my life blah 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 and they eventually they kind of go their way and then somehow or another uh, at the end of the movie uh, whenever Flynn and Emily are, you know, literally neck deep themselves in water, uh, out of nowhere comes Jomo, uh, you know, to find these guys inside of King Solomon's mines and that. And how did he find them? Did he follow them the whole way? All this whole time, did he follow them after they separated? So that was just one of those things that I was that instantly just popped out at me, like, you know, where'd he come from? How did he know that they were there? You know, so. Anyway, that's my little list of maybe don't like as much or found a little funny or odd kind of stuff. And what I liked... Alright, let's go over that. What I liked. Uh, Flynn looks back, thinking about his dad. He never really knew. I do like backstories. Uh, there's a, a... I can't remember when Flynn's dad uh, went missing or died or whatever. Uh, but he was about 10 years old, maybe. And... Uh, he never really got to grow up and know his dad all that much, really. So he, there's a, a couple of instances where he's kind of looking back and thinking back and sees pictures and stuff like that. That's, you know, it's kind of, I like that pretty good. It, it kind of gives you a little bit of backstory, just a little bit. And What I also liked is the returning main characters. I mentioned that in the very beginning. I do like that. Uh, since production and budget were maybe stepped up, uh, it's hard to say. The first movie is actually really good, and, and they go to lots of different locations, and it's really well done. So, uh, But it looks like maybe, you know, the production was uh, maybe popped up a little bit, probably from the success of the first movie. Um, I believe it's another interesting story, uh, kind of contradicting what I said a while ago about 
all these kind of go along with the biblical theme and stuff like that. But it was still an interesting story, and you know the characters uh, seemed to click okay together. You know Flynn and Emily, and and uh, even Jobo or Jojo or whatever the heck his name was, <laughs> Joma, Jama, Joma. <laughs> you know they seemed to click together okay, and it, it made for a, a decent story. So there you go. Uh, I think Flynn might have met his female equal, uh, brain-wise. She's a smart, well-educated woman herself who rivals Flynn in the number of degrees that she has. So that was that was pretty cool to you know kind of see him meet someone like that. Uh, the filming location, the movie gives a good sense of adventure, um, which I like. I like you know. It, it takes you from one place to the other. I like movies like that that gives you like a lot to look at and just different things. It's like with the first movie, you know, you're up in the air, you're down on the ground, you're over here, you're over there, you're different locations that look different and feel different and are different. I like that. And it gives you a good sense of adventure and that they're moving along and doing things. So I like that. Uh, and a little lighthearted one, uh, Gabrielle Anwar from The Neck Down. Face ain't bad. From the neck down. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Always like a little eye candy, right guys? Uh, it's a fun adventure with decent puzzle uh, with decent puzzles and rewards. You know, that's what we're looking at these movies for, these kind of adventure Indiana Jones, you know, national treasury kind of movies and stuff. You know, we like to see like puzzles and booby traps. Booby traps You know, like from Goonies. Stuff like that. So, you know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good when it comes to those things as well. Uh, a twist in the final act. I kind of suspected, but wasn't sure until revealed. Now, I've seen this movie before. Like, really only one other time before, probably. And, uh, and I really forgot all about it. I really didn't remember anything about it at all. And uh, after watching it again to do this little uh, review talk about, um... I kind of suspected something, but then in the end it comes around and you're like, oh dang, huh, well that kind of sucks, and that's, hmm, I hated being right. Flynn in the end makes a very big move that shows growth for his character. Uh, again, this little part also reminds me of Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Um... I won't give really too much away. I mean, we're talking about the movie, and it's got, you know, I've got some spoilerish kind of stuff in there, but I don't want to give too much away. Uh, it's, uh, it's a part, though, that at the end, you know, you can see him struggling with the decision of what to do, and he finally, you know, he, he does what needs to be done, uh, unfortunately, at, uh, at the cost of something, but also, uh, at the good of cost uh, costing something <laughs> so anyways guys that's uh that's my little reviewish discussion whatever of uh, the librarian return to king solomon's minds again this is the second movie in the trilogy we do have one more to go uh and it's called the librarian curse of the judas chalice and again, I've only seen that movie one time, so I really don't know anything about it. So it would be kind of like watching it for the first time. <laughs> so, anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you give these little uh, movies a try. They're really good. Uh, I, I do believe Flynn makes the entire series, uh, the entire trilogy, my personal opinion, and Bob Newhart, and uh, for some reason I can never remember her name, uh, Jane Curtin. To me, they make the trilogy uh, what it is, but really Flynn, of course, stands out. Uh, the acting, his character, his quirkiness, just the way the way it's all done, really underrated and under maybe underappreciated. And uh, I, you know, stuff like this is kind of a hidden gem, is what I'll call it. Um, so yeah, and they originally aired on TNT back, you know, when on their uh, days that I mentioned i'm not going to try and tell you the dates but this one came out in 2006 so anyways guys i hope you enjoyed that 
I really enjoyed them myself, and uh, I'm going to try and watch them at least a little more often than what I do, so I kind of keep fresh on them, because I think they're worth watching. So anyway, we're wrapping this up. Go check out the playlist. Uh, I got a playlist of movie reviews or whatever, and a playlist for everything else in the world that you could be interested in, from cooking to cycling, uh, some art projects and photography. Uh, the Man Cave one is where I got all this going and leading up to it and all the cool stuff that happened that led up to this. Uh, I've got all kinds of stuff in there. Video game stuff. Grandpa Reads where I read uh, kind of short kids books and that. I just did one this uh, Christmas and I think you should watch that. That was I really like that one. It looks pretty with me and my one of my granddaughters sitting there in front of the tree and the lights and everything. It just looks pretty. I like that. I like doing that. And so uh, anyways guys like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And guess what? Get up, get out, get ready, and do it to it. And we'll see you next time for the next and the last in this movie trilogy. We'll see you guys later. And it is Friday. Have a good weekend if you get your weekends off. If not, have a great day, a great night, and great everything. <laughs> we'll see y'all later. Get up, get out, get ran, and do it, do it!